Hey, how's it going, YouTube? How y'all doing today? As I was putting this uh, hay bale over here, I am starting to realize that it is starting to mold. I don't know why, but you know, uh, you know, I'll show y'all what I mean by when I say that legumes in general, for whatever reason, the legume plant when it gets wet, it just molds. It it's always the same thing. Uh, I don't know if these cattle have already kind of finicky uh, picked through it. But it's starting to mold and I and I am starting to notice that it is a bit damp. Uh, let me see if I can get up in here on the side. But it is starting to mold. Uh, if y'all if you, I don't know if y'all can see really up in here. Um uh, but there 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 are spots of mold in here like this right here. Like you see this is starting to mold. There, there, it is starting to mold. You see this right here is starting to mold. You see this is some mold spot right here. So this hay is starting to mold. And I had a feeling, you know, but I don't know why, but the, uh, the, the, the bean plant, it just molds very, very quickly. I don't know what, what, what causes that, but it always does. But, uh, yep, um, this hay is starting to mold just ever so slightly. I, I did see a couple of mold spots on it. It's not the end of the world. Uh, I don't think the cattle are going to get, like, deathly sick on it or anything. But I do have to feed it pretty quickly. Um, I am supposed to have about 10 days of dry weather. So, uh, I should be okay. But my next lot of uh, forage, I will probably uh, not do uh, any sort of legume hay again. I will probably go more towards a, a grass hay, and if I need to, I'll just mix the grass hay with the distiller grains. I'll uh, I'll order a uh, a load of distiller grains, and I will add the distiller grains to the grass hay to get the TDN and the protein requirements. Because whenever I formulate a uh, a diet plan for these animals, I always look to get my TDN. At somewhere at about probably about 70 percent 65 70 percent of well, when I start getting towards that 75 percent I really want to make sure that that uh, that feed stuffs has has, has a uh, an, uh, an additional amount of protein in it so if I were gonna feed a feed stuff that was 75 80 percent TDN I would make sure that the protein levels were a bit higher than if, if I were gonna feed 70 percent 65 percent TDN and I would also make sure that the uh, that that the that I would limit feed very carefully. I would not let the animals just out on the feed and eat it. But when I when I'm sitting at 65% TDN and the the uh, these animals are showing signs of having their their, their manure is showing signs of having a, a a high level of fiber in it, I'm not worried about acidosis really, because that uh, that that uh, that fiber in their diet, the, the stuff that's clumping their poop up. It's uh, it's it's also what reduces their chance of having acidosis. And but yesterday, I gave these animals this little salt lick block. It's it's a trace mineral block, salt lick trace mineral block. But I figured, you know, I I do uh, put a little bit of a trace mineral salt in their food. But a block like this, it costs about eight dollars. And I really only need to probably buy one a month. And these animals, they'll they'll get a little bit of salt and, and mineral in their food. And anything else that they, if they want to eat more salt or if they want to eat more mineral, they, they can just lick on that for the rest of their diet. And it's only going to cost me, but maybe I buy two a month. It's going to cost me like $15 a month. It's not a big deal. $20 a month. It's not a big deal. But man, uh, yesterday, or I don't know, I, I was, I've been kind of thinking about this, but up until this point, but you know, up until about two, two, three weeks ago, up until well, up until about last month, I had zero idea that I was doing so drastically good here. I, I I did not know until until the money started going into my bank account. I did not understand that I was doing so so freaking good. I did not understand. But when the money started going into my bank account, I started to realize. That's when I started to realize, like whoa, like I am doing extremely good for myself. Like. If I were going to put my uh, my performance on a graph, on an X on an X Y graph, and put everybody who is farming ten acres on that chart, 
everyone who is farming, who who is running cattle on that chart, and the uh, the uh, the uh, the performance of the individual was determined on how much money they brought in at the end of the at the end of the day. If I were going to put myself on that chart with everybody else running cattle on 10 acres in the entire country, maybe the entire world, I, 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 may, I actually have a chance of being at the very, very, very top end of that graph. Like being a point zero 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 one percent chance of occurring. I did not realize that 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 my uh my my performance was was so substantially high until until I started until I started putting the money in my bank account because when I start putting money in my bank account right I mean the money the the dollars that I make are the same as the dollars that everyone else makes right it's just as hard for me to make a dollar as it is for anyone else to make a dollar and we all make the same amount we all make the same technical dollar right if I make a dollar that dollar can go into somebody else's hands and they can utilize that dollar however which way they want just like me right i mean the dollar is just a dollar and so utilizing the dollar the amount of money that is being generated by the farm as the uh as the gauge for performance as a gauge for for performance you know it, it i may be the only person in may, maybe even the entire world who who runs commercial cattle who, who who makes money like this running commercial cattle on 10 acres that you know i did not realize that until about three weeks ago so all of the videos that i had made up until that point up, up until about one month ago was me making videos while having zero idea of how drastically good i was doing and so you know because I, I, you know, uh, when, when when people say, you know, it's easy to talk when you're up, you know, it's easy to talk when you're ahead. But you know, uh, but when you're when you're when you're like when you think you're losing and and you're sitting there and and you're talking like 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 talking just crazy, like just just talking, you know, what I'm saying talking trash. I mean, all oh, this that this that this that, and then you end up winning into such a, a drastic degree. I mean, the world gonna look at you differently. I think. Because up until about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I had zero idea that I was doing so freaking good, right? I mean, up until I started getting the money in my bank account, I had zero idea. I mean, how was I supposed to know, right? But when the money, the money is the same money that everyone else makes, right? It's just as hard for me to make $150,000 a year running cattle, $135,000 running cattle on 10 acres, commercial cattle on 10 acres, as it is for anybody else. It's almost impossible. And so, you know... Uh, up until about 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 a month ago i had zero idea i had zero idea and i was still you know making videos and, and everything and, and you know and but i mean i think it's interesting like now that i think about it when i when i consider the reality for what it is you know i had made all of these videos when when i had i had zero idea that i was doing so freaking well for myself and then at the end at the end of uh, of of this uh at the end of this uh, this uh, this whole uh, this whole lot of cattle, I realized that I, I I am doing so drastically well for myself. I didn't realize until the very very end. And so you know, but that that's one of the hardest things. It's hard to talk trash when you're losing, right? When when you don't know that you're winning, it's very hard to talk trash, and it's very hard to to be very adamant in what you're doing, and it's and it's very difficult to be that person who you know. Even if they don't know they're winning, even if they think they're losing, that they're still going to wake up every day and talk trash and they're going to go and they're going to work 15 hours a day. I mean, it's very hard to be that person. It's very difficult. That's also one of the reasons why most people will never make it. I mean, you know, the, the, the reason why most people never get to this point is because getting to this point is so hard. It is so difficult. I mean, they're going to live their life and then one day they're going to wake up and, and you know, uh, someone... Who, uh, who, you know, whatever, someone's going to walk up to him and say, oh, this, that, this, that, this, that, you know. And, and oh, man, you know, uh, why are you doing this, that, this, that, this, that. Oh, man, you just wasting time. Oh, this, that, this. You know what I'm saying? People, could, and then you're going to have to sit there and listen to that. And, and if you don't have any money in the bank account, what are you going to say, you know? Uh, you know, most of the time, I mean, you just, all you can do is just wake up and keep going to work. I mean, and, and it may take 15 years to, to, you know, you may have to listen to that stuff for 15 years. But when you get to the point where you're doing so drastically well for yourself and you got all this money coming into your bank account, 
people can't really say anything at that point, right? Because I mean, the response is just gonna be, you know, I worked 15 years of my life, 15 hours a day, seven days a week, and I make $150,000 a year. I mean, what's fair is fair, right? I mean, the money is the money. I mean, I mean, what, I mean, what, I mean, what can people do at that point? But I did not realize that I was doing so, so extremely well for myself, like to the point where I may be the only person in the entire, I mean, if there was one other person in the entire country, in the entire world who can make money like me on 10 acres, I mean, it would be very, I, I would love to meet this person. You know, because I, I haven't met anyone even close, not, not, not even close to this point. You know, making making eleven thousand dollars a year an acre on ten acres running commercial cattle is almost impossible. If everybody could do it, everybody would be doing it. I mean, it's not like people wake up and they go, "Oh man, I don't want one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year." You know, it's it's that's not you know that that that's not you know. I mean, if people could make one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year running commercial cattle on ten acres, almost everybody would be doing it. But the reason people don't do it is because it is so drastically difficult. It is, it is almost impossible. I mean, it's, it's just so, so hard. But, you know, when I look back at it now, when I look back at it from where I am now, you know, I mean, I mean, the money is the money, right? I mean, the money, I mean, I got the money and, you know, and, and, and next year, if I want to go and I want to buy 75 acres of land, you know, and it cost me $2,000 a month, I'll just buy it, you know, because I, I, I was taking a look at the USDA loans yesterday or about two days ago or something like that. I was taking a look at the at the, at the loans and the USDA loan right now, the, the, the lending rate is sitting at 4% and, and at 4%, at 4%, okay, so the, the, the USDA, the lending terms for the USDA from my understanding is that they will give me a 100% loan to value loan. So they'll give me a loan for 100% of the property and they don't charge uh, private mortgage insurance even when they do 100% loans. And so I can get a loan for 100% of the property. And if I am incorrect, right, let's say I do have to put a down payment down. Well, I, I'll have, you know, $120,000 in the bank account. It don't matter. If they say you need to put a, a, you need to put a $25,000 down, I'll put $75,000 down and I don't care, right? I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 you know, it don't matter to me. You know, and I, but you know, I, I've, I've, I've been saying this all the time, but let's say I go and I buy a piece of land, right? A 75 acre piece of land and I pay $2,000 a month for it. It is much, much harder, like un, unimaginably harder to run, to, to farm 75 acres than it is to make $2,000 a month. And so when I look at it and I say, man, I am extremely good at farming. My results, you know, put me in the top point zero 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 one percent of performers in the cattle industry. I ain't really, I ain't worried about the two thousand dollars a month that it's going to cost me to buy seventy five acres, right? I mean, I'm just not worried about it. I mean, and, and when, when when people talk to people like me, and I am on the way, way, way like top end of of performance. I'm going to I'm going to see things differently, okay? I'm going to talk about things differently. The things that I see and the things that I talk about are going to be different. You know, like when I say, you know, I work 15 hours a day, you know, you know, uh, 7 days a week for 15 years to get where I am, my 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 performance shows it. The way that I the way that I, you know, I I I, I handle things shows it, right? I mean, it's very obvious. It, I mean, it ain't hard to tell. And so, you know, the things that I talk about are going to be different, but I, I guarantee, guarantee, guarantee that making $2,000 a month is way easier than farming 75 acres. And if I, if I scaled my business from this to 75 acres, I would be making like $750,000 a year. So the $2,000 a month that I got to pay for the property is not even something that I even consider. What I consider is, do I, you know, is, is, you know, uh, well, I don't even, I, you know, if I had the opportunity in front of me right now, I would go and take it. But right now, the big thing is that I have to file my taxes. And when I have to file my taxes, I have to write my, my farm income on my taxes. And the USDA is going to utilize my farm income specifically, my farm income, not, not my overall income, my farm income 
to provide me leverage. So they're gonna leverage me according to my farm income. So the more money that I make on my farm, the more money the USDA will give me, up to $600,000. And the USDA lending rate right now is 4%, and they will do a 100% loan-to-value loan with zero insurance, even when I take a loan that is over 80% loan-to-value. And so, uh, you know, and if they t if, if I read the paperwork wrong and they say, oh, you do need to put a down payment down, I have money. It don't matter. And but here's the thing, right, is that let's say let's say if I were to go and buy a piece of land and it would cost me two thousand dollars a month. Right. And I had and I had to pay two thousand dollars a month. That means if I made zero more money and only utilized the money that I have in my bank account and I had I, let's say I had one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in the bank account and I only utilized the money in my bank account, I, I could still pay the bank for like five years on just the money in my bank account before I really ran into any financial trouble. And so when I look at these things and, and I look and I look at these lending terms and I look at my plans and I look at my long term plans, they're really, you know, I would have to completely stop working to 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 not have the two thousand dollars a month that it would take for me to, to 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 pay the to pay the USDA for the loan. Right. I mean. And but if I bought 75 acres, my cash flow opportunity would also drastically go up. You know, I could make more money on 75 acres than I can on 10 acres. Drastically more money. And so, you know, you know, the the two thousand dollars a month, I don't really even care about it at all. What I care about is that the is if I walk into the USDA loan, the lender usually when I you know like. I've started to realize that like when I walk into the bank and stuff and I and and, P, and they they ask me how much money I make and what do I do when they figure out that I run that, that I run cattle I, I just run regular old commercial cattle on 10 acres and I make the amount of money that I do most people I mean they they uh they don't know what to think you know because the the checks that I'm cashing in are, are coming in from these commercial sale barns and and I mean these bankers they don't they don't know what to think they're like, man, you know, this, I'm probably the only person that's ever walked into the bank, put money in my account like that, told them exactly what I was doing, and they just go, what, like, like, what, like, how, how, what, what in the world, like, you know, like they don't know what to do. Like they've never seen that before. And so, I mean, but I, I honestly had zero idea up until about one month ago that I was doing so drastically good for myself. I had zero idea. If I had known, I would have ran more cattle. I would have bought more land sooner. You know, I, I would I would have, you know, whatever, you know, but shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? The only thing that I can do is look back on my life right now and say, you know, I mean, when I look back at, at my life at this point and I look at it clearly, you know, I can make my, my, my choices accordingly. You know, don't don't even worry about failing, right? Don't even worry about failing, and you know, chances are, if somebody, if anybody does anything, because there's a lot of things to be good at in the world, right? People don't just have to be good at farming, and people don't just have to be good at running cattle. People can be good at anything. They can be good at at building at building spaceships. They can be good at building cars. They can be good at at, at creating computer programs. But whatever it is, you know, if that person works 15 hours a day for 15 years of their life seven days a week non-stop chances are they are going to end up being extremely good at it extremely good i mean to the point where where even you know like 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 they would be on the very 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 top end of the performance curve and so i mean you know there was a man, I know, I know I've said this in my, in my other previous video, but there was a man uh, named Laszlo Pogar who ran an experiment and he called it the Grandmaster Experiment. And his, and his, his, uh, his experiment was uh, to test his theory that people who are, uh, who are extremely good are not born extremely good. That they are, they are extremely, book, extremely good because they started young and they put in a lot of practice. And the way he did that was he turned all three of his daughters into into grandmaster chess champions. And his, his daughters, all three of them, became grandmaster chess champions. And, his, and the chance of this man, as an individual, giving birth to three to three daughters that had IQs in like the top point zero 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 one percent of the world, 
it, it's just not going to happen, right? I mean, the only way that that he that, that his daughters were able to get this good at chess was because he started them young and and he and he made them. He did not make them. He gave them the opportunity and they took it. They 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 actually lived very happy lives. Like they didn't end up killing themselves or anything like that. They ended up living very happy lives. They they loved their lives. They loved playing chess. And all three of them became world world class grandmaster genius level chess players. And you know, but that that was his whole theory is that people who are extremely good at things, they get extremely good at things because they practice a lot. And so I mean, it don't matter what it is. It can be chess. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.